In this episode, I'm FPL Canal and we're talking stats. The Fantasy Football Show. Hello, listeners. Welcome to another episode of our 30 and 30 with Planet Hashtag FPL. My name's Serge. My name is James. And today, James, introduce our guest on day six of our 30 in 30. The the, the man who everybody thinks is is on a boat on a canal somewhere. Yes. Um, it's <laughs> at FPL Canal. Uh, hello, Neil. How are you? I'm good, thank you, James. Good man. Thanks for joining us. Before, just, just to clarify, you're, yeah. you're not on a canal boat, no, are you? No, no. I'm, I'm not on a canal boat, no. Where does the name come from? It's where you live, right? It is. It's 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 uh, Cornish for Cornwall. Ah, ah who see, knew? Like, you, we've um, we've recorded a few of these now, and um, every single time, I feel like me and James are learning new stuff. We're like just asking our guests so many questions. I've just learned something new. I thought it was something like Kapow or, or like a superhero type. You know, you watch every, old Batman and every pow. week now I get someone going, "Ah, <laughs> oh, I just realised it's K E R N O W. I always <laughs> thought it was Canal. It's basically." Yeah. Me and my fucked up tongue, basically. So if this episode does nothing else, at least it clarifies the spe- spelling of your uh, Twitter handle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, listen, we wanted to, to uh, get you on because you've been one of our correspondents all season, um, not focused on any specific club, but the stats, which is something that uh, I would say James and I look at, but we're not superly stat geek heavy. Um, so your articles all season have been really, really interesting. And as we, as we prep for the next season, getting all of the correspondence on, this was one that we were really looking forward to, to try and get a kind of different insight into the game um, and that kind of thing. But tell us about your FPL 2018-19 season. Happy with it? Um, not too dis- dissatisfied with it. It could have been better. Mm-hmm. Um, started off pretty well. Um Started off with two scores in the 90s, which was a good start. Um, and hit my captain for the first, I think it was 13 weeks. Wow. Didn't I think I had fail. 13 all season. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good So, a so good yeah, I, I got into the, I was in the top 500, um, sort of about halfway through. Game week yeah. 18, I think it was. Yeah. Um, but then I... I was close to being top of the Christmas Island League at Christmas. Wow. Okay. Um, which kind of influenced my thinking, and I, I ended up selling Salah, um, bringing in Sterling, and triple captain him against Palace at home. Oh, the, when they um, lost three two. When they got beat. Yeah. Ta- Townsend's won the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Salah scored and assisted away at Wolves, so. Is, is that where you're plotting the start of a, a, a demise? Where, where did you finish in the end? I finished 32k in the mm-hmm. end. Um, that's that's, that's but yeah, a from, really, really good finish. From game week 18, I had 13 red arrows out of 14 weeks. Ouch. Yeah, the thing is, it's a great from, rank, but you're probably a bit regretful, I imagine. No? Yeah. Yeah, dropped from like 400 odd to about 60. 66k or something. Do you think you kind of touched on it there with uh, like the Christmas Island League and that? Do you think you you, you started overthinking things too much? I th- yeah, I think so. Um, well, I think that that Salah change was probably where it went wrong because that's just about where he went on a, a decent run. Um, I then had to bring him back in, which meant that I overlooked Pogba, Rashford when Solskjaer. St- just came in the, the new manager um, bounce that United had yeah I didn't see that soon enough so I missed out on his I think he had like nearly 50 points in in four weeks or something mm. yep um, I was reluctant to bring in Son because of the Asian game so I missed out on his I think he had 50 points in four weeks around the same time yep and just went downhill from there I got got trapped in uh, in the basement with you Sige for but we... Sané's double game week oh okay you, you, you were locked up well Leroy Sane. Yep. I still like him, though. <laughs> I think um, that was the same weekend, wasn't it? It was Salah's hat-trick at Bournemouth. Yeah. And Son got two goals and two assists the next day in the 6-2 at Everton. I'm sure that was the same weekend. And then we had the nothing from Leroy Sane. One point 
out of two yep. games. I don't Fans know. I don't know how you've managed to get Basement Man into this podcast. No. Mate. Well, he he keeps rearing his head, but I did hear. <laughs> Um, and um, uh, right now, I, I have to say, I mean, all rumours are literally just as, as uh, pie in the sky as they can be. But that that um, Pep wanted to get rid of Leroy Sane. As I've said many times, he come play for Spurs. Would you have him at uh, Hillsborough, Neil? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> I don't know if you probably. know this, Suj, but but Neil supports I'd, Sheffield Wednesday. We were having a nice chat before we we hit the record button about uh, Hillsborough. So I remember um, I remember Sheffield uh, Sheffield Wednesday in the nineties with Chris Woods in goal, Chris Wood in goal, and uh, old Chris Waddle and uh, Hurst in those days. And that's the time that uh, and Neil was telling me that they they toured Cornwall and yep. stole his heart. Oh, is that how it came yep. about? Yeah, yeah, they played uh, Bodmin Town in a friendly in <laughs> 1993, and I think I think they won nine nine two or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my dad took me along to that game, and uh, I met all the players afterwards, and that was it. Did your dad that support Wednesday as well, or is it just by the off chance no, he, for that game? My dad's dad's an Everton fan. Okay, oh. interesting. Wow. So have you got roots um, from up north originally, or? Uh, not not that. Re- Lancashire area, my mum's from. Okay. Have so you for, not, have you forgiven your dad for taking you to like that, that game yet? Or sorry? Have you forgiven your dad for taking you to that game? Uh well it's 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 not been the most successful of uh since they've got been relegated from the Premier League, it's been a lot more woe than it has joy. Um, yeah. but it's it's fourteen fourteen years today since the playoff final at Cardiff which I would have been on my way to at the time, which was probably the best best footballing experience I've had. Was that Hartlepool? Yep, Hartlepool. One, mm. one in yes, extra time. Yes, James. <laughs> James, James is trying to... Uh, James, to be fair, has a footballing memory that is uh, encyclopedic. 4-2? It must be more frustrating when... 4-2, um, yeah. yeah. When, um, when your neighbours have just gotten promotion into the Premier League. It's always worse when your local rivals... Are doing well and 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 you're kind of mediocre or struggling. Why, to, why are you to, getting you know, a guest on and trying to depress? I'm not. Him? I'm just saying. You know, we're just talking about. It, but I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to um, join ranks and like even being in the Premier League as a West Ham fan is more woe than happiness. So I wouldn't <laughs> complain about it. Um, yeah. So th- so this season you've been writing for us um, with a real kind of stats focus. Is that is is that your kind of background? Is that passion? Are you a, a, a lover yeah, of Microsoft Excel? Um, no, no, I'm not not got any particular background in stats or anything, but I I just I've always been interested in sport and numbers really. So um, I worked in a bookies for a while, which was pretty much a perfect blend of sport and numbers. Um, Sounds like someone I know. No. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I did it for fucking long enough as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd probably still be doing it now if it wasn't for the uh, armed robberies, but. Oh, nice. Yeah, I never suffered that fate. I'd, I'd still be doing it now if it wasn't for Surge and them shit fucking hours, mate. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. And, and your, your hours, ma- but... so it, I know the thing, the th- I'm, I'm not a very stats based manager because I believe, uh, I, 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 I just probably don't have enough time to spend to delve and go down the rabbit hole. And also, you can spin things in so many different ways. Um, you can take the same stats and look at them from two completely different angles to paint whatever picture you want. I remember uh, James put a tweet out very early in the season about when you were comparing Salah and Mane, if you remember. Um, was it Salah and Mane at the time? I think so. Were you saying, uh, yeah. what, what, do you see glass half full or do you see glass half empty? Yeah, it was It was a screenshot of their, their two statistics and just exactly. say, tell me what you see. Yeah, exactly. And all the feedbacks were different. Yeah, some people were glass half full, some half empty, some Salah, some Mane. And and that's why I kind of stats I, real, I take with a real pinch of salt when, when I'm managing. Um, and I think the other thing is that I'm very easily convinced like you could put a stat in front of me and i'll be like all right fine yeah that makes sense let me just go with that you decision. might want to walk out of this room mate <laughs> <laughs> no there's the season's finished now so there's absolutely well, no chance of that happening well neil's gonna give you some stats that i know are gonna fall into your lap for next season mate. i i, I could do with them <laughs> let's do it um yeah you, go yeah, on so I, I, go on neil i like to look look at the numbers in a way that they kind of challenge like biases that i have Mm-hmm. So, as someone that's grown up watching Man United dominate 
throughout the 90s and the noughties, I'm fairly reluctant to play a player in FPL away at Old Trafford. But looking at the numbers this season, quite early on, it was obvious that United aren't the team that they have been. Um, and players actually scored more points at Bournemouth, Watford, Leicester and Everton this season. Uh, less points, sorry, at Bournemouth, Watford, Leicester and Everton than they did at Old Trafford. That's interesting. So Even Bournemouth. looking at stats like that, it then allows me to avoid falling into the trap of not playing them just because they're Man United. You just, you just said bit earlier, Neil, you missed out on Pogba and Rashford's halls over Christmas. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So I didn't I didn't recognise that Solskjaer was going to have quite the impact and the mistake of transferring out Salah and then having to rectify that meant that I didn't have as many transfers to use at that time. So it was bad timing. Um, but Man United, in terms of a fixture, weren't anywhere near as tough as they have been previously. Yeah, no, I mean, other than Pogba and Rashford over that Christmas period, there wasn't anything you could yeah. look back on through the season. Luke Shaw, the odd game here and there. There wasn't anything you could look back on and go, oh, we should add a bit of that. Or I think it was only two home clean sheets, Neil. You'd probably correct me on yeah, that. Yeah, I think one, so. One of them was um, Liverpool. Yeah. So, so a lot yeah, of people would have left out that weekend. To see. Yeah. yeah, I... They, they've <laughs> they've got a lot of building work to do, United, <laughs> massively. I don't think we really know if they're going to sort of pump the money into it or or not. I saw someone tweet this morning, they've already been linked with 53 players since since the window opened. Yeah. Um, of all different sort of variations of quality and budget range. I, I, don't, I don't really read into the transfer rumours as much, but... Uh, I did see a, a lot of interesting stuff around the lit, which was literally don't don't uh, damage the poor kid. Let him go to Barcelona, um, but he he could be one potentially that he's he's the most serious of all the rumours in my opinion. I can't see why he'd go yeah. there at the moment. And, no, well, I can't see why anyone would want to go there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Game time. Andy Carroll might fit in. <laughs> he's in fun. It's Andy Carroll wants every pod for yeah, no yeah. reason. Well, until he signs for another club. Um, but we're not, it doesn't matter. He's not coming back to West Ham. Yeah, he does sign for another club, mm. so you shut up about him. <laughs> um, Neil, do you want to cover off a little bit? We were messaging last night about the promoted teams a little bit. Um, yeah. You went over some some really interesting numbers of sort of perhaps what we can expect from, from Norwich, Sheffield United and, and Villa next year. Do, do you want to cover some of that? Yeah, can do, yeah. So, yeah, I looked at, I looked at the last four seasons of promoted teams so 12 teams, mm -hmm. um, including the teams that have just come up. And I saw that in terms of goals conceded, the three promoted teams this year will be 8th, 10th and 12th for defensive record in the season that they got promoted. So in... Garbage, on basically. Average, <laughs> Basically average, saying you're going to concede yeah. a lot of goals, isn't you, mate? Yeah. So the average increase of goals conceded for a championship team coming into their premiership is about 53% over that period. Yeah. So if Norwich and Villa increase by 53%, they'll actually concede more goals than Fulham did this year. And they were the top, the worst defence in the Premier League. So Villa, Villa would be on course to concede 94 goals wow. next season. Wow, and that's Which... just against City. <laughs> 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 that's really interesting. But then surely is that not also relative to the number of goals that were scored in the championship that season in total? So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I kind of just to just to kind of think about it, if were, were more more goals scored in the championship this season, therefore more would more would have been conceded by these clubs? Or I, th I guess, are we thinking that the change is going to be not that much that it would affect an average or, or a total over 30, 38 or 42 yeah, games? Yeah, poss possibly. Sheffield United kept 21 clean sheets in the championship last year, yep. whereas Villa only kept 12 and Norwich 13. Right, OK. So, that, so that, that's a big difference. So I'm assuming that Sheffield uh, United were eighth in that table and the other two were... They were the 12. team that were eighth, yeah. yeah. And they were they were only slightly worse than sort of Brighton and Newcastle when they came up, one, only one goal in it. Right, OK. So, so Sheffield United, clean sheet-wise next season, 
if they're if they're sort of an average decrease, they you'd expect them to keep sort of ten clean sheets next year. Mm. So that's if you've positive, got like an ever present. No, it's more than West Ham this season, so uh, I'd take double figures clean sheets in any season. Yeah, I think yeah, Wolves so, with nine, I think, yeah. last year maybe. Yeah. Oh, that's really so interesting. So they, they could be decent defensively, value-wise, like Ender Stevens, If he plays every game, keeps 10 clean sheets and chips in with a few goals, I think he could get towards like 150 he's points. He's the one getting the most mentions, but my theory is he'll be five, as I've said several times already. I think yeah, that if we he know it... five million if he gets 150 points... It's still a he's good not going to get 150 points, is he? You never know. You're talking about an average. If he plays 38 games, you're talking about an average there of coming up to towards for a game. I can't see that. I don't think. Mm. Well, you got two yeah. definitely for performance. Ten clean sheets. That's another 40 there. So you're talking 80, 120. So you're looking for another yeah. 30 points to come from BPS and goals. I think it's yeah. Feasible. So if he scores three goals and gets the bonus in each game. Yeah, it's <laughs> easy not, like that. It's feasible. It's feasible. Right, not, Ender Stevens not is in. Who's next? <laughs> I think Ender Stevens is going to be in for a lot of our listeners if he's four point five. Yeah, I think um, if five he's four point five, then yeah, definitely. Oh, four point five. He goes million, in it's automatically. A decision. I, I think. Yeah. Um, it's basic. a gamble because it's it's a it's a promoted team who their goalkeeper was on loan last season. So if he doesn't, if they don't manage to get him back from United yeah mm -hmm. I, I think the intention is Dean Henderson isn't it I think the intention is to get him back is, is, yeah is I what think I've they heard. will try to um, you never know though no true so that they have, could they have been linked bearing. with a move for Sheffield Wednesday's keeper so oh right well, Westwood yeah because he's he's well I think we've got an option for one year but he could leave on a free this year if we don't take that does he normally wear short sleeve shirts yeah Oh, I can't but stand he, that. It's one of my pet hates. Uh, Sorry, what? so off track. Goalkeepers in short was, sleeve shirts. Why? I fucking hate it. Why? It's just wrong. <laughs> What's wrong with I it? I hate it. He's so continental, especially when a British goalkeeper does it as well. I think it's uh, it's normal. I don't think anything's wrong with it. Really? He's going out to play sport, but I suppose they do spend a lot of time standing around rather than running around. Nah, gloves and short sleeves just shouldn't be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's not on. All Sorry, right. Neil, what were you saying? Well, I was just going to say that he we need to keep him. He's He was frozen out for the first half of the season. Um, and then when Bruce came in, he well, when Bullen took over as caretaker manager, he came back in and he kept 11 clean sheets in 20 games. Surely he wouldn't make that move, would he? I wouldn't imagine so, but you never know. <laughs> I, it's Premier League football, isn't it? it yeah. It's got to be some, some kind of lure there. But he's been on Wednesday a long time, hasn't he? He has, yeah. So you'd hope that there'd be some loyalty, but... There's not a lot left in football, mate, I'm afraid to say. Apparently Huddersfield have offered him a contract. Oh, is he, is he um, out of contract as well? Well, he's... Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. It's all sort of rumours of we've got an option for one year, which we've offered to him, but I don't know if it's... We can we can enforce it or whether he can choose I'm not it all just seems a bit sort of unclear at the moment I think we're going to have to do a championship special with you as well Neil um, it's interesting you mentioned <laughs> Huddersfield there briefly I don't know if you knew this Suj but the Huddersfield team that got promoted didn't have a positive goal difference okay did you know that? No, I did not. That's amazing. Oh, wow. They won the playoff semi-finals and the final one, uh, or semis against Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. And the final, it's read in both on penalties as well. And yet, looking at their numbers, obviously they stayed up the they first time, the didn't first they? they? They did quite Second well. And defensively, an they they were decent. The, the thing I wanted to highlight, Neil, that was obviously we spoke about the defensive capabilities of the three teams coming up. There looks like there's yeah. been a massive swing in terms of the amount of goals scored. So if you compare... The three teams have come up with, say, Burnley, Middlesbrough and Hull from sort of three years yeah. ago. There's there's big jumps in terms of the amount of goals goals scored and goals conceded are going up. A little bit like yeah. what you said, Serge. Yeah. Like, it's, it's evening out. So, I mean, Norwich's total of 93 goals scored last year is... That's big. That's 11 more than Wolves got the previous year. And we were okay. all yeah. lauding about the Wolves team, right? So, I think there's plenty of attacking talent at Norwich that we might be looking at. Obviously, Pookie got nearly a third of them goals by yeah. himself. Yeah. He's the, he's the main guy, right? 
um, at Norwich. It'd be interesting to see what happens with him in terms of pricing and what have you. How do you how do you think the three of them will get on just as an overall nil? Uh, I think I think they'll all struggle to be honest. I don't like Villa. Villa scored eighty two goals, which is the same as Wolves got, mm. but Tammy Abraham scored. 20, 20 odd of those, twenty six maybe, um, and he's on loan. You you don't know if he'll go back, um, especially with Chelsea's transfer ban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's um, a big issue. I think Norwich will just concede too many goals. I think they they could be quite similar to Fulham. Yeah, exactly what I think um, potentially mm. with Fulham. Like on their day, they could be and, really good, but it... and Sheffield United, they they played some good football last year. Um, but it is a step up. I'm not. I don't know that they'll be able to play that football against some of the Premier League teams and have quite the same results. Yeah. I think. I think all three of them could be towards the bottom of the table. I think there's a there's there's a few. The three of them can can target. I think Villa need it. Villa are going to need to spend money because they've got they a few money. players on. Yeah, they've saying, got a few th- players on loan on that. I think Villa of, of of all of them are the ones that I would say are most likely to stay up. Um, although they all have the kind of different pros and cons, like you said, Villa have got money, Norwich have got goals. I think Sheffield United will grind out results much in the way that a Burnley have in the past or what have you. I mean, I fancy yeah. all three of them above, say, Brighton, for example. I think we'll, 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 we'll know where we stand yeah. a bit better in a couple of months, but th- these three com- coming up doesn't feel as clear cut as it did last year. I think like last year, everybody knew Wolves were a decent side. Everybody, mm. even though Cardiff were the team that come up as runners up, everybody thought they were going to go back down. Yep. And Fulham, uh, people kind of sat in the middle, weren't sure. Whereas I think with all three of these, they're sort of in the not sure area, really quite yeah. where it's going to go. Um, yeah. I, uh, certainly, I can't see any of them performing to sort of the level that Wolves did. No, not at all. I mean, that, that happens once every 10, 15 years. It's Reading, it hasn't happened that a team have performed as well as Wolves did. So, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah. What do you... No, I, th- I on, think that FPL wise they'll all be teams that you'll just want to watch for a few games before yeah, you generally. really dive in there. Mm. That's that. That's how I feel. And then you sort of get the gems that, I mean, Doherty kind of emerged quite early, didn't he? Sort of week three and four last year when yeah. everybody was talking about Barry Douglas before he went to Leeds and stuff yeah. like that. And suddenly Doherty emerged. I don't know, perhaps it will be the other side of the flank for, for Mender Stevens next year for Sheffield United. Might be the two fullbacks that Norwich might emerge. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I agree. I think it would generally be a washing brief. And, and those, a little bit like new signings, the guys coming up like Pookie and that, they'll probably be overpriced. Grealish is going to be overpriced just because he's fucking Jack Grealish. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think overpriced in FPL or overpriced for Spurs to buy? We don't buy players. <laughs> I told you that. You do. You will now. You made a profit, and you were <laughs> sniffing around him a little while ago. So Jack Grealish will be overpriced in in FPO, I think. Yeah, and uh, there's still a, there's still a chance that he might not be a Villa. But uh, next season. also as well, Jack Grealish will, will get the lure a little bit like you, Neves, going maybe. back to United a little bit. Like people around the world want to go and buy United players at the biggest supported club, right? So, and, yeah. and then obviously with Liverpool and that as well. So if you're looking at people, go, oh, I know Grealish. Yeah. That's what a lot of players will do. Yeah. Um, so I think he'll be overpriced. I, I, I wouldn't disagree with you on that, whether or not he'll be overpriced. But what is overpriced at the end of the day? I think the thing is now that there's just so many more. I feel like there's more options available in that mid to lower tier. And that makes it even harder for the uh, promoted sides to, to to pick one of their players. I wish you'd stop that sentence halfway through, Serge, when you were talking about what is overpriced. Yeah, because, what is overpriced? Because Neil... You're back in here, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about value a little bit, if you can. Because we did, at the live show, we obviously covered a, a team that you put together in terms of sort of best improving players second half of, of the season. And there were some names that jumped out which were quite surprising, like, for example, Chris Wood. Um, was it 99 yeah. points in the second half of the season? Obviously, the fact that yeah. sort of uh, Seamus Coleman had, had outscored Lucas Dean over over that yep. period. Um, Mark Noble made it onto uh, into a team of the year for the first time in his life, oh, which was know. the most random team of the year to get. Yeah, it, into. it was fucking random. Do you, you want to uh, talk a little bit about value, Neil? Yeah, yeah. So, so I've had a look at the value, the points per million for the second half of the season and overall for the season. Um, so, 
it's obviously it's the lower priced players that tend to do well on these sort of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so the top two for the second half of the season were Pickford and Etheridge, which is the same for the whole of the season. Um, so I definitely think in terms of goalkeeping choice, you can you can get away without going with a premium, but you need to pick the right one. So I don't think there would have been many people picking Etheridge um, at the start of last season. No. But with VAR coming in, Pickford with his penalty saves, you never know, he could be... But the, 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 the pair of them, depending on his price, particularly, I mean, Everton, I think Everton finished with the fourth most clean sheets in the mm. end, I think. That, yeah. What is that, is that ridiculous run at the end of the but, season? But Pickford's numbers eight. are slightly distorted, as with Efridge earlier in the season, by those penalty, penalty saves. saves and stuff. It does massive. I mean, yeah. if you met a penalty save, you, you're basically finishing the game with 10 points. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're going to yep. probably hit top bonus if you met a penalty save. Yep. Um, so it really does throw the numbers up. Um, do you want to cover some of the defensive assets in there, Neil, from that table you, you did? Yeah, so, so this is using the prices at the end of this season to calculate the points per million. So second half-wise, Alexander-Arnold, obviously. Killed it. Best defender. Mm-hmm. So second, Shah for Newcastle. Yeah, e- which I is... mean, FPL footballers... So he really likes him, doesn't he? And yeah. He did have a good run. The odd goal as well. He did score a couple. We didn't really get too excited with Fabian Shaw just because Newcastle weren't in a real run. But they did then kind of, that second half of the season, got some consistency. Was it five wins at home on, on the bounce? Um, and Shaw started yeah. contributing then. Uh, Lascelles had patches out injured as well. So Shaw, um, Shaw's a good shout. Shaw's a decent shout. I think he will be if he's with, back in at four point five. Takeover, yeah. You never know what what Newcastle will do next year. Oh yeah, Sergio Ramos right. and uh, Messi and all. These yeah, players. he might he might not be in the team, but the team might be better. Yeah. What do you think um, of Coleman? Coleman was the third defender. Yeah, as we said, so more than if Dean. He's priced, if he's priced lower than Dean, well, he will be, won't he? Next season. Yeah, I want to do a little you, bit of You'd digging. imagine so. I, I didn't look at the... I, I remember we spoke about this on, on the live show and, and in previous pods. I want to do a little bit more digging. You may have the answers to my questions off the top of your head, but was were Coleman's points consistent or did he kind of haul in a few games that gave him that added advantage? I feel like Shane, his, his points were consistent throughout that second half of the season as opposed to... I think in... In terms of beating Dean, it was mainly down to Dean's red card and um, his own goal. Yeah. I think he had an own goal against Southampton, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, Dean's feast um, of famine, isn't he? Like. Yeah. <laughs> um, they both obviously picked up a lot of clean sheets towards the end of the season and uh, Coleman chipped in with his goal. And that kind of pipped I think him. it was assisted by Dean, wasn't it, against mm. Burnley? What? But Coleman's always been the sort of player that likes to get into the box. Yeah, I think people put off his age by a little bit now, and obviously the 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 bad injury that he had that kind of kept him out for uh, almost a year. I think people are a little bit put off by that, but he, he, you know he's gone back and played basically all of this season. Um, I don't see Everton being in a rush to strengthen in the fullback areas. So, I mean, were Coleman to come in at, no. at five and Dean at six, I think you go for Coleman, don't you? Yeah. If 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 you yeah. want to go down that Coleman route, Coleman could potentially be captain, maybe. I he think he is club captain, of, I think, captain, yeah. The back I think he is, yeah. He yeah. Wearing the armband. Where do you... Yeah, so he might be... Well, I've got you, nailed. Neil. Where do, where do you sit on these these Liverpool guys in terms of the defensive ones? Where do you think they're going to be priced next year? It's, it's difficult. Um, I, I think eight might be a bit much, but then having had a look at it, I think if you look at the points per million for the season, if Robertson had been eight, he'd have still been one of the top 20 value players. Yeah. So it's hard to tell exactly where they'll go because that will be quite a leap for a defensive player. Um, but they, I think they do need to try and put people off if we, doubling if we, and tripling up on Liverpool. If we take what I think is worst case scenarios, so Robertson's eight, Van Dijk and Trent are seven and a half. Do you think, would you, or A, would you still go and buy them? And B, do you think they'll still offer value? I think, I 
think they'll struggle to replicate what they did this year. I think Liverpool have overperformed to stay as close to City. I'm not. I don't think. I think that in terms of defensively, they've kept more clean sheets than you'd probably expect them to do again next year. So I think their points could come down. But I still think Alexander Arnold and Robertson with their attacking threat, um, even Van Dijk with his goals, they're still going to represent value even at, if they were at 7.5. Yeah, I, 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 I think, don't know if well, I agree with that, that, that they over-delivered on clean sheets. I reckon they'll keep they'll keep even more. Did I you think, see the, um, the, the Virgil Van Dijk joke? He wet himself at night and still woke up and kept a clean sheet. He still had a clean sheet or something or whatever. <laughs> Jesus, that's yeah. not even cycled how many times? I have no idea. I only, <laughs> I only go on Twitter once a month, mate. But I think the thing with, that surprised me with Liverpool, I can see the goals in Mane and Salah and, uh, and Firmino to a lesser extent. I can see the clean sheets and the returns at the back. Their midfield never jumps off the page as like the world-leading midfield in Wijnaldum and Henderson and that kind of thing, uh, Fabinho, De- Cater, they're not they are not the best of the best in the middle of the park, which is why sometimes I'm like, where's their, where's their engine they, they, or where's the link-up they, play coming yeah, from? Yeah, but they do. The, it's their functionality in, in that midfield free mm. that allows for these amazing numbers that Robertson and Alexander-Arnold are posting in terms of assists. Yeah, true. Because yeah, I the suppose way, you have to count them as almost wingers, really. Well, basically, yeah. Um, and obviously it allows the Salah and Mane, if they're playing either side of Firmino, to to go narrow and, and tuck mm. in and get into the box. So I that's, easily, that's part of Liverpool's tactical I setup. can even see Liverpool... I can see Liverpool matching their clean sheet record next season comfortably. I think it's probably more... Uh, you. I don't know if they match that points total again. Yeah, maybe not. If they get 97 not, points next year, they'll win the league, surely. Yeah, quite possibly. <laughs> Could you imagine if they didn't? <laughs> Ouch. At, at that point, it's just... Um, you know when you're playing computer games and you just completed the whole game. I think City should just retire the club. That's it. Just leave it. We've completed football. <laughs> yeah. Um, Neil, I just want to jump in and, and challenge Suj on, on a question here. So on on Neil's, um, this is like a quiz, is it? It's just one question okay, for you. For so for Neil's date is based on um, points per million, right? In the second half of the season, right? Excluding goalkeepers and defenders, which player had the best points per million? In the second half of the season, um, points per million excluding. Is it going to be Basmati Busquets in Rice or mm, Mark no. Noble? Are you, are you asked me God. because of West Ham player. No, it's not. Of course, it's not oh, a fucking okay. West Ham I player. It was a West Ham focus. Points per million in the second half of the season. So best value, mm. essentially. Neil, tell him the answer. Jota. No, it's not Jota. Oh, Jota was not a bad shout it's, though. It's, it's your favourite, James Ward Prowse. Yeah, JWP. Um, yeah, he's he. I owned him for the last four game weeks of the season, and he sat on the bench for a couple of them. But um, he he is always been a good FPO asset when he's getting the minutes. I don't think there's any denying that. Mainly because obviously the value and the set piece taking, uh, free kicks and um, corners and what have his delivery is very good. Um, but I don't think he did enough in the season to justify a price rise. If he comes in at five million next season, Hassan Hootl's playing him, then um, he's going to be up there in terms of consideration. The only thing is, um, yeah, he did drop back into like the right back role, didn't he, when they didn't have cover um, at the end of the season. So he he is prone to playing a little deeper if they need. But but James Will Price, great player. Uh, ag- agreed, and and obviously a lot of these when you compare, obviously. Uh, points per million it's a lot of these budget options that do come out on the top so Neil do you just want to cover off sort of from the premium players uh, who offered the best value who was the best points per million for the whole season I haven't even looked oh was was it Fraser uh, maybe no it was was Trent was it for the whole season yeah it would be points per million for the whole season was Etheridge was Etheridge was best Trent was the best outfield player just ahead of Robertson and Van Dijk right interesting Nice. And then Fabianski. Nice one. Thanks for the save there, Neil. Yeah. Do you just want to cover off the, the <laughs> premiums briefly? Because obviously they do offer value in their own right as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Mane was top for the second half of the season, points per million. And the whole season, um, right? And the whole yeah. season, yeah. Points per million. Um, and then second for the second half of the season was Vardy. Yeah. So you looked at the players that were priced points. at, what, eight and more? 
I think it was eight and more million. You looked at the, the the price of the players where you compared this, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. This is all premium players yeah. that were eight million or more at the end of the season. And obviously, Vardy's come out second in that, and he's he was the only one on the list. Obviously, wasn't from a top six club. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, he's um, obviously under under Rogers. He'll be interesting again next season, I'd imagine. The thing is with Vardy, Suge seen... and I talk about it so much in terms of. We expect to drop off at some point, don't His we? Pace is going to go at some point, but he's still a little poacher in the box. He still gets in and about um, the box. I remember when Leicester came to West Ham, he was still getting in and around the box and having chances, albeit they, they weren't great Leicester that day. Um, yeah. Where, where did Aubameyang come on that? Because he's... I know people are drafting their squads, Second. but yeah, Aubameyang for me is one that might be my a set and forget for next season. Quite far down. In second, terms of value. second half of the season, he 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 dropped he dropped down to probably about outside the top ten for the mm. premiums. He he only had eight, eighty four points for the second half of the season. Um, I mean, two hundred and five for the whole season. I think rotation so. became a big big thing with um, Arsenal in terms of Europa League and what have you. And this is this this yeah. season's probably been the worst for rotation that it's affected people. Is um, it? I don't know if it's the worst, but it's, it's getting more and more prevalent. When you've got the likes of Wolves and Watford rotating, Wolves West had a Ham subtle rotating. side every week, basically. Yeah, I mean Nuno threw a no, curveball no, to Cardiff about, sorry, game. And... I'm, I'm being uh, talking about the latter half of the season when they had FA Cup stuff going on. They did mix it up a little it's bit. It's understandable, then. isn't it? I, yeah. One of the le- major lessons that I learned this year was like, if a team's still in Europe at the end, unless they're challenging for the title, fucking ignore them. I think. Yeah. Because it's just a ball like the rotation with with Europe of constantly going. Europe, Premier League, Europe, because you're going week after week. There's only one week break between the two legs. Yeah, you're going to get screwed on on the rotation. So unless teams are changing for the title, like I think in hindsight, I wish I'd stayed off Spurs in spite of those good fixtures towards mm. the end. And the thing with this season, at the end of the season, especially in the last six game weeks, was not only were the clubs fighting for the top four rotating because of Europe, bar uh, bar Manchester United, they were losing as well. So you got the double whammy. A, your player, your player might or might not have been rotated. And if they weren't rotated, they're flipping lost anyway. Yeah, it's a psychological getting yourself up for the weekend when yeah. you've got the big Champions League games in the in the midweek. Doesn't matter who that opposition is. Mm. Mentally, that's that's fatiguing. You saw even Liverpool in game week thirty seven when they won at Newcastle. I spoke about how difficult that would be in between the two yeah, Barcelona and it games. Was. They scraped it, didn't they? Let's mm. be honest. It really was. Yeah. Uh, Neil, anything else you particularly want to cover numbers-wise or shall I let you go back and enjoy the rest of your day, pal? Um, yeah, so I was, I was, in terms of the premiums and the value, I, I was I was speaking to you one about the um, captain points. Yeah. Um, and how, how I only got 530 captain points for the season. Um, but if I just kept Salah and Sterling for the whole season and rotated them based on who had the easier fixture... I would have ended up with a hundred more, six hundred and thirty. Wow, that's a lot. Which, I think when when we looked at the stats on the guy that won it overall, he was in the late five hundreds, was he? In terms yeah, of captain points, I think he had six six hundred and thirty nine. Oh wow, okay, so you had a match <laughs> so, down. But, give or take. I was because I was low. I was like four hundred and fifty, four eighty, something like that. Yeah, and he hit it thirteen times. Yeah, yeah true. A couple more than thirteen, but um, not much more. Fifteen. Um, so just so, just set and forget two players and just rotate for the captain season. Interesting strategy. Yeah, that would have made a lot a lot of difference to my season. One hundred extra points would have made a massive difference to my rank. Um, so possibly I was overthinking it um, in terms of just going with a, a City and a Liverpool attacking asset. Mm. Rotating the two would have would have been. A benefit um, if you added in Hazard to the rotation and played whichever one of the three had the best fixture, you'd have ended up with 714 captain points. Wow! So I know that that's budget that's, that's budget taking as well, though, isn't it? Looking back, and you've got three premiums you're carrying there. Yeah. Um, I can't see many people but, have been brave too many weeks to captain Hazard over Sterling and so. No, he did no, right I think, for me. I think I did it once weeks that I captained him. We picked up a 30 point return one week. Uh, which is interesting. Yeah. I think that people are talking about um, different chips and how they could change the rules in FPL and stuff. I think a, a captain free hit chip, which just means in any week, your highest point scorer automatically gets the armband on him. Then you have, you have to choose that before the week starts. No, no you, well, you just play that chip. 
So if you if you own Sterling, Salah, and Hazard in a particular game week, whoever got the highest points, and it could be someone else, just ends up getting doubled up, and that's it. So you don't have to pick a captain that week. It's just you know it would still end up being rate. Neil Weatheridge in goal, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're covered at that point, right? You yeah. don't have to send that rage tweet of I put the armband on Salah and Etheridge brings in a 13 point return, mm. 10 point return, whatever it may be. That was my idea anyway. Yeah, no one's listening. No, nah, no one cares. I was not a very... Uh, I wasn't going to write hey, into... Come, uh, come back tomorrow with something better. Will you? Team at officialfpl.com or wherever they are. <laughs> they could leak me the uh, prices if they wanted, though. Don't mind a bit of that. Neil, where can people find you on Twitter, mate? So, FPL Canal. Not Canal. Good lad. Yeah. Spell it. <laughs> uh, K-E-R-N-O-W. Good lad. Fantastic. Um, yeah, thank you for all your time putting together stats and articles and keeping James entertained with um, decision dilemmas throughout the season. We're looking forward to obviously hearing more this season. I think it's going to become even more I love prevalent. it. When we started the correspondent idea, yeah. one of my main jobs was to find a spot for Neil because I really wanted him involved because <laughs> yeah. Neil's got a very uh, different way of, of looking and seeking at the at the numbers that's yeah. not obvious in your face. It's really Yeah, unique. like you said, trying to trying to break bias, which is which is the way I like to use yeah. it as well. It's, it's good. Fantastic. Listen, thanks again for your time. Um, and uh, of course we'll be hearing more from you in 2019-2020 season other than that James anything yeah. else left to say uh, no thank you Neil Q Music Manchild ciao for now 